So welcome everybody. Hi, I'm Stephanie Schuler, and uh, my name is Myron Manogarin. And we are excited for today's Tea Time Research Circle with Dr. Alicio Riategui and Sofia Garcia as our guests today. Their Tea Time talk today is entitled The Working er, is entitled A Technological Perspective on peer review as a strategy to improve students' writing skills. Peer review is a known strategy with the potential to improve students' writing process. There's strong evidence showing that peer review may benefit both reviewers and authors. In this talk, we will present a peer review platform developed to support writing, reviewing, and activities the platform has specific features to help students in the reviewing process, providing functions such as word repetition, detection, and cohesion, checking through text mining. In their presentation today, we will also discuss the challenges of massive courses in higher education, and, we will f and they will focus on peer review as an alternative to include writing activities in this context. The advantages and disadvantages of this assessment modality will be discussed, as well as recommendations collected from the literature for its implementation. Myron. So just a little bit about CERL, in case you don't know or if it's your first time with us. CERL's the Center for <laughs> Educational Research on Language and Literacies at the University of Toronto as a part of OISE, which is the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. So the Searle Tea Time Research Circle, it's an initiative that we began in 2016 and has been continuing strongly since then. Um, one of the amazing things about the Research Circle is that it brings faculty, MA students, MED students and PhD students, along with any visiting scholars and community members abroad together to discuss all kinds of contentious and current issues in language and literacy education and research. The Searle Research Circle stems from the center's purpose to disseminate current and relevant exciting research practices that take place all over the world and make that research accessible to all of us. Yes, so we are pleased to introduce Dr. Rea Tegui and Sofia Garcia as our guest speakers. Alicia and I are friends now for a few years as we discussed since his last visit to Toronto in 2019. Alicio Retegui is, Retegui is a professor at the Faculty of Education at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. He has a PhD degree in computer science from the University of London, England, with emphasis in artificial intelligence. He has been the coordinator of the Graduate Program of Educational Informatics and president of the Social Sciences and Humanities Committee responsible for the evaluation of interdisciplinary graduate programs at national levels at CAPES, Brazil. Before becoming a faculty member at UFRGS, Professor Ria Tegui worked at Callisto Entertainment in Bordeaux, France, applying AI concepts in computer games. He has also been an AI consultant for the company Cognition in Paris, France, working in knowledge management projects for large corporations such as Peugeot and Thomson. He has also been a Fulbright visiting scholar at University of California, Irvine. And also co-presenting with him will be uh, Sofia Garcia, who's a doctoral student in educational informatics at the Federal University Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil, uh, Udela, which is part of Uruguay, and her MSc in educational processes mediated by technologies in the Universidad Nacional de Cordoba, which is Argentina. And she's also licensed in communication sciences from the University of the Republic, which is in Uruguay. Um, she has been working for over 14 years in distance education projects in professional training for all of Latin America. She is a teacher and tutor in virtual courses at the Facultad Latinoamericana de Clencias Sociales, so Flasco, Uruguay, where she also carries out the executive coordination of the Master in Education, Innovation and Technology. She is the, techno she is the technology coordinator at the Faculty of Information and Communication at Udela, so in Uruguay. Um, and now it is our honor to give the floor to both of our presenters. Uh, we look forward to hearing. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you once again to talk a little bit about our research. It's a pleasure to be here with Sophia. Uh, she's been working with me now for a couple of years, I think, Sophia, right? And uh, so we're going to talk today about the use of peer review as a tool to improve students' writing. So I'm going to share my presentation with you, just a second. Uh, I think, Stephanie, it's, it says here that I cannot share my, my screen with, with you. Sharing has been... Okay. Can I try again? Yeah, yeah, try again. Please. Right. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I will start talking about writing for, uh, I have been working with uh, the development of tools to support writing and tools that use artificial intelligence, mostly because of my background in, in the field. And we know that writing is at the center of educational processes, whether you're in elementary school, high school, or if you're at the university, you always have to write. And there are so many problems with uh, the development of writing skills at these different levels. We, we have developed some different projects targeting different levels, but today we're focusing mostly, in this presentation, we will focus mostly on higher education. So the use of these tools in higher education. As I mentioned, uh, a lot of my research has been uh, guided by this question, you know, can technology help students improve their writing skills and how this can be done? Uh, we have developed a tool called Sobek. It's available online. Uh, down in the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, the URL sobek.uofrgs, which is the name of my university. Uh, so you can you, you have access to this tool, you can have a look at it. And what it does is it takes any kind of text and it produces this kind of diagram that you see here on the right side of the screen. Uh, it extracts these terms and it finds relationships between these terms. And uh, we have tried to use this strategy to get students to think about what they're writing and to get them to review their own texts, you know, their own text productions. Uh, uh, firstly, we were very much guided by this uh, cognitive model of writing that has been, it, it's a very known writing, uh, I, I don't know if all of you know it, uh, but it's a very known, well-known cognitive model of writing by Hayes and Flower. And we, I'm just highlighting here part of the model because uh, the authors, they have, uh, they focused here on the process of writing in these three uh, axes, let's call it, uh, planning, translating, and reviewing. So when, you, when you're writing, you're actually planning what you're going to write about. You transform this into words and sentences, that's the translating, and you review, right? Uh, uh, you don't do these things one step at a time. You know, sometimes these things overlap. Uh, but we have tried to focus on reviewing. And here I'm talking about writing and reviewing. We have developed a project some years ago in which we used these graphs to show students what they, we were, we extracted these graphs and show the students uh, these kind of extractions of what they were writing about. And we, we just posed some questions to make them think about what they were writing about. Uh, and we, we, this, we had a very large number of students. If you see here in this, the, the figures we have here, uh, we have uh, around 500 students. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a control group, we had an experimental group. So the control group was using this strategy 
to use these graphs to review what they were writing. Uh, and the experimental group, they were just writing without this, uh, with, without this tool and without uh, any information about uh, what the other group was doing. Uh, and these, uh, these essays were corrected by teachers. With, the teachers did not know if the students were writing using the tool or not using the tool. And they had a very different uh, average grade for these groups. The control group had this uh, average grade 5.28, whatever that means. But we can see that there is a difference, uh, a large difference uh, for the experimental group. So the students that used this, uh, this tool. So doing the st statistics and the t-test, we got a p-value of uh, 0.002, which is a significant number, a significant result for showing that there was a difference between these two averages, uh, as the only thing that were, was different here was uh, the use of this system. You know, we inferred that the system was actually, it, it did help the students to write, to improve their writing. But so here we were talking about, uh, I'm going to come back to, to this particular cognitive model of reviewing one's own writing. But then we moved from it to this other model by the same authors, not exactly the same here. We have many more authors. Uh, I was talking about a model that was just by these two first ones. And here they made a different model in which they try to organize uh, all the tasks one has to do to read for evaluating. So this is about assessing other people's work. And we used this cognitive model of reviewing to, to model our uh, technological platform, which is what I'm going to, to show you uh, later on. Uh, we, we have, this is just the first, when, when you go on the website of this platform, uh, you, you will see this. Uh, we were struggling to try to find an English name for it. Uh, and then we came with this on peer. In Portuguese, it has a different name. Uh, we'll get to that at the end of the session. Perhaps you can help us to find a better name for it. But uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let Sophia speak a little bit because she will talk about peer assessment uh, on, because this is a peer assessment platform. So reviewing other people's work. So she will talk about peer assessment. She'll talk about a little bit of her work and then I'll come back to show you the platform and some, well, some other uh, studies that you have been doing. Thank you, Eliseo, and thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, oh, I'm sharing, I'm sorry. Are you, I'm going to share again, I'm sorry. Okay. Everything is okay now. We are going to talk about peer assessment. As Alicia said, uh, we are going to look into the advantage and disadvantage of this uh, teaching modality. Uh, at the beginning, we are going to talk with this definition of topping. Peer assessment is an arrangement for learners to consider and specify the level, value, or quality of a product of or performance of other equal status learners. This is very important because this is a kind of activity different of the teacher assessment in which the student assess the work of other students with the equal status, status learner. So how uh, can to implement in it in a course? For example, we can uh, ask for an initial submission, the task. Then uh, we have the horizontal feedback, the peer review, 
that uh, can be with mark or and or comments. And then you have a final submission to improve the task. In this uh, kind of activity, the, you can measure the, the change, the improvement in the writing skills, for example, because you have an initial submission with some uh, characteristics, and then you have a final submission. With what, uh, we are going to talk about how or what in the middle of that. What can teacher can do? Can assess the random task if you have a very large class, for example, at the first years of university, you have, I don't know if you have the same, the same problem, but here in our countries in Latin America have a very large uh, first years uh, in the, at university, then you can, as a teacher can assess some random task and then uh, give feedback, general feedback with for uh, all the students. Also, if you, you have a small group, you can assess the final task, not, not only the initial, but just the final one. And also some teacher want to assess the comments. So, uh, what we know about the peer assessment, not only we, the experts around the world, because we uh, analyze a lot of literature and uh, it says that peer assessment improves the quality of learning and also allows the inclusion of open assessment in massive classes. As, as you know, with a, a large amount of students and a small amount of teachers, the ratio is uh, very difficult to have with this ratio, it's very difficult to have uh, open assessment and then teachers uh, work with um, multiple choice tests, for example, and this is a very strong difficulty that we have here in our courses uh, at the beginning of the university. So it alleviates the difficulty of teacher ratio. It's uh, globally accepted for formative evaluations. Mm, we have a discussion about the final evaluation here because some experts said that uh, two or three students per peer assessment can be equal as a teacher assessment but it's not, uh, I think it's not a discussion that is uh, clearly, I need, uh, we need to study it much more, but for formative evaluation in the middle of the course as a, as a uh, way to learn is very accepted. It's also uh, very good for the reviewer as Eliseo said in the previous slide, uh, there are a lot of processes in, in the student that review a work. It's not only uh, have received feedback, it's not only to receive feedback, but also to give, give feedback is very positive for the student. We are going to see which are the reviewer's benefits, for example, Giving and receiving feedback has similar effects on the writing development or even better that only receive feedback. And I think that it's a very interesting thing to think and to include this kind of activities in uh, our courses. And that's why giving, uh, giving feedback requires carrying out problem detection, diagnosis, generated suggestions, which allow us to compare the work of other with our own work and to have different perspectives. And that's why uh, review is similar or even better than only receive feedback. Which are the advantage of the peer review? It promotes uh, critical thinking and also uh, helps to develop writing skills and promotes autonomy and motivation. 
social belonging, interactivity, and fatty. And which are the disadvantages? It doesn't save teaching time. <laughs> the, at the beginning, a lot of uh, a lot of teachers work with this methodology, thinking that it could be a way to save some teaching time. It's it's okay. It's not a it's not a bad, bad hope, but uh, it doesn't save teaching time if if is if it's carefully planned and carefully monitoring. So you have to spend a lot of time in this, in this kind of activities. Of course, it's not the same if you have to read uh, 500 of texts of, of the students, uh, it's, it's, it's not the same time. But if you have a small group, probably it's, it's the same. And also, some students dislike the methodology. At least at the beginning, it has some uh, some change uh, resistance to do with that, but maybe it can be work uh, work it with them, or some students also the doesn't doesn't like to be assessed with marks, and also to give marks to other students. Some students said, "No, I don't. I don't want to give some marks to other students. I don't know how to do it." So it's it can be uh, difficult uh, that you can find in the in the way. And how to implement in it? Some suggestion from the literature: work with colleagues, not not do this this way alone. Make the purpose explicit for the students why we are going to use the peer review and also have, have a clear rubric which, which uh, we are going to assess and how we are going to assess uh, which element we are going to review and how we are going to do it. This is a suggestion for every every task in a course but in this in this case it's very important to do it conduct training for the peer review process it's not uh, students not necessarily know how to give feed, feedback and neither they know how to receive feed, feedback so it's important to include some uh, training here to uh, make them feel comfortably with the process. So you can include self-assessment or some examples about how to uh, give feedback and so. And also uh, the experts suggest to have multiple evaluators, not only one. In some uh, cases, they talk about six to nine. I, th I think that it's too much because you can you need to think that if you ask a student to re review six tasks it's a lot of work for them so i i usually use two three two to three reviewers and it, it works very well and also it's suggested to be anonymous to avoid uh, bias and this is the the here you have uh, in the slides I, I can send to you the literature and I'm going to pass the presentation to Eliseo again because he's going to present the tool. Okay. So uh, I'm going to try something that is sometimes a bit scary. I'm going to try to show you the tool itself and not just some screenshots. <laughs> so hopefully everything will work out. Uh, uh, but before I, I, I show you the tool, I think something interesting about this, uh, this platform is that we have, we have used, just a second, 
we oh here I have to I have to go through the Sophia's presentation just a second. Okay, uh, so uh, we have used here in Brazil, we have this NM that you see here on the bottom of the screen. This is the national, um, I called it uh, the national high school examination, which is an exam that all students in Brazil have to do to go into university. And one of the things they have to do is to write an essay. Uh, and there are very specific criteria for the evaluation of these essays. Uh, here, I, I tried to, uh, to make a brief summary of uh, the competence, comp competences uh, that are part of their evaluation criteria. So uh, the first one is the mastery of formal written language. The second one is text development according to the genre that is uh, in this case, essays, uh, defending a point of view, knowing linguistics mechanisms to develop an argument, and respecting human rights, which is which might be a bit strange, but the thing is that sometimes the students uh, come up with some strange writings, and they, depending on what you write about, you your essay can just be marked with zero or something like this. Well, uh, what we did is we tried to map all these competences uh, using that model, uh, the Hayes flower model. Uh, and the whole construction of the tool was guided by this. So, Let's try to show you the tool itself. Hang on a minute. This is a screenshot, but I will, I'll try to change here just a moment. Uh, okay, I think now you're, you're seeing the tool, the actual tool uh, and uh, how it works. This is the, this is the, the Portuguese version. So uh, uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to understand everything that is written, but I'll try to explain some, to give you some highlights of, uh, of the tool. And we, we started building an English version of the tool, uh, but uh, I was talking to one of the PhD students who's working with me and he, was, he developed this whole thing. And I told him yesterday that I, I believe a very important part of the tool is all the knowledge that we put into it. And all this knowledge is in Portuguese. Uh, and there are videos, there's a lot of things. This is a guided assessment, a guided review. Uh, and I, I, wanted, I really wanted to show you how, how this works. Well, anyway, when you start, when you log in, you have this menu and here, if I click here, I can write about a given theme. And here you have different options. I'll just choose the first one, which is, it's called the theme of the day. So randomly it picks up a theme and it shows it to me. So the idea is that I have to write about what is given here, this particular topic. Here it's called your classic. Whatever that means, I have to write here. The tool does not help the students to write. So the tool doesn't do anything in this particular moment. Uh, the tool is supposed to help students in the revision part, okay? So uh, I'm not going to use uh, to show you, but you know, it could be just writing here. But what I'm going to do is I'm coming here, I will come here to the revision, yeah? Uh, this number two, it means that I have two, there are two texts that I'm reviewing but I'm going to pick up another one to show you how it, what, what happens from the very beginning. When I choose a revision to, to be done, th what the tool does is it picks up an essay that was written by a student and it brings it to me and the revision starts here. 
the first thing that happens is that the tool, it points out some words that I have to, uh, I should have a look at them because perhaps the student is repeating too much these expressions. This is something that the tool does, but this is one of the things that in that examination, they, they don't want you to do, you know, this is, uh, this is related to style. We, we, we have to use synonyms in this kind of thing. So I can come here, I can click, and I can, I can give a particular, I can say, well, there's a problem here because of one of these criteria. And uh, so here I will just uh, confirm, I, I could make a suggestion instead of this, uh, you should write that, for example. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, so you can see that there's a mark here because of uh, my change. Uh, and then we can we can advance. So it says, okay, you made uh, just one change. Here, if I find a word that I don't like, if I see that there's a problem here, I can select. When I select, again, I can make a suggestion for the student that is going to receive the review. I can say, uh, instead of this, you should write just inclusion. And I will say there was a problem of semantics, whatever. And so all these marks are, are begin to they are, they appear in the text that the student is going to receive. But uh, when I told you that there is a lot of knowledge put here, is that on the right side of the screen, there are instructions for the student about this particular topic that he's uh, reviewing. Here, uh, it says uh, formal language. Uh, and there, there's a video that we created here that talk about this. Uh, so, uh, and the student can say, okay, is the language formally, uh, does the student follow the, fo the formal standards of the language? And I will say, okay, I agree. And then I, I advance. So here, uh, I'm not going to go through each of these criteria, but what we can see is that we're going through a guided tour of uh, the reviewing process. Uh, and our review process is guided by the, that NM, which is the Brazilian National Examination. Uh, and, but this is, we can configure the whole system. Uh, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you now some, some screenshots, just a second. Okay. There are some screenshots that I took before. Oh, uh, this is this is interesting. Here you can see uh, the graph. This is the text mining tool that is working. Uh, what we what we did here is that we text mine the topic that the student was writing about, and in this following screen we have the topic, uh, sorry, the text mind, but the, the text of the student was uh, mind. So you can compare the graphs. What, what is done here is uh, the tool asks, okay, you can compare here the, the concepts that were ext extracted from the topic and from the student's text. Do you think that the student is really writing about the topic that he was asked to write. Uh, and what you see now is all these, uh, uh, these are the reviews, no, sorry, here. here these are the, all the criteria that we, we programmed and that you saw that I just uh, show you. All this criteria can be configured. And here we have this configuration uh, tool. Uh, you can create different criteria. You can modify the criteria that is already here. Uh, and 
this is not too difficult to do. Sophia, she's uh, working in one of the ver in one version of the tool in Spanish, and this is going to be implanted uh, in Uruguay, and this is going to be part of her work. We're talking too much. Uh, I'll give Sophia uh, back the word just for her to to talk a little bit, perhaps, of what is being done in Uruguay, and then we'll we'll finish and give the word back to you. Yeah, in the second semester, we are going to implement the, the system in some language courses at the university in, in Uruguay. It's, it is in Spanish, but also in some uh, foreign language for us, such as English and Portuguese. And we are going to focus in the teacher's perspective. And we are going to consider not only the needs uh, of the teachers uh, for teaching, but also uh, how, is, how easy the process is and uh, the requirements of the teachers to work with these uh, kind of tools uh, at, the, at their courses. And we are going to focus, focus on, on, the, on this perspective because there are a lot of studies about the students and the and the gain for the student, but we, we want to know what about the teachers uh, with this kind of instrument. So we are working with the Liceo team, with Marcio, uh, to adapt the tool to the, for not only to the language, to the Spanish, uh, but also uh, in a different way to work because uh, the tool, uh, differently that uh, the way they use in Brazil now for a very massive uh, test that is an M in M, uh, we are going to use it in into the courses. So we are going to adapt the tool for that. And all, also we are going to adapt the language, of course. And that's all, I think, Eliseo, I don't know if you want to yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to wrap up because uh, we don't have any more time. Uh, just uh, a, a last remark. Uh, what I think is interesting is that I have one student who's working from the student's perspective, so he's monitoring the use of the tool by the students, and Sophie is going to work from the teacher's perspective of peer assessment and using this tool. Uh, and we have. We also have this thing of having the system in Portuguese with some criteria, in Spanish with some criteria that are not going to be exactly the same, and why not in English, an English version, hopefully uh, soon, and uh, who knows, with, with your collaboration. So thank you so much. Uh, it, it, it was really a pleasure to, to, to give you this this short talk and explanation of, of this particular research we're carry, carrying out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alicio and Sofia. Really, really interesting on so many levels. Um, first of all, you know, I think we're finding ourselves in a time, I can't even say post-pandemic, pandemic. pandemic. <laughs> I think uh, for me as an educator and as a parent, re-evaluating our values and re-evaluating maybe what we're doing at school. And uh, this particular tool um, allows, uh, gives uh, students agency, gives students voice to be able to communicate their insights and allow their insights to be valuable contributions to a peer's work, whatever the topic is, you know. Uh, so that's huge. And also to be able to develop um, their skills as a critical thinker, you know, um, and caring about their friends or their peers, their classmates work content um, and it gives them validity as a developing individual that their you know they their perspective matters which is I mean and those are just like other asides and and my background that has to do with language based learning disabilities I think of whole other areas there regarding brain development 
and uh, being able to text mine words and concepts, you know, that are core and being able to ease into, you know, abundant literature, which is often overwhelming to so many people. So there's so many levels that I myself see. But I'm, we're going to open it up to everybody who's here attending this tea time. And uh, we ask you for your thoughts, questions, and contributions to this wonderful discussion. Then just uh, unmute yourselves and uh, speak, or, or you can participate in the chat, and we can read that as well. My first question is the uh, other question. Where did you get this uh, text for data uh, mining? Re Reza, Reza, we can't hear you too clearly. Um, yeah. Try again, Reza. Okay. A little bit louder, but yeah, yeah. it's it. Yeah, it's a bit. It's better now. Yeah. Okay. So my question is: When you were doing the this data mining, what kind of text were you? High performing students, or native or non-native speakers? Things did you? get the resource from Brazilian students, high performing students, or did you get the text from somewhere else for data mining? Reza, uh, first of all, nice to talk to you again. Oh, uh, hi. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, yeah good to see you. Uh, I, it was very low, the sound here, so I'm not sure I got your, I really got your question, but uh, uh, let me see if this was it. Uh, you wanted to know what texts we are mining to show, right? Yeah. So we, okay, so uh, we have here two things, the topics the students have to write about, and the topics we went to the database of NM, uh, and uh, national examinations in Brazil, topics that they use, and we just collected them. So what we see that you see there is the mining of that particular, just the extraction of the top main topics that they speak about there mm -hmm. in, you know, in that, uh, in, in the examination. Yes. And we also mine the, uh, the essay that the student is reviewing. So the mm -hmm. students that participate, the students that go into the system, we, we invented, well, we didn't be invented. We, we are using uh, this guideline to, for, for the mechanism of writing and reviewing. The student has to make two reviews so that he will get one review of his work. So you write, mm -hmm. and then uh, you have to make two reviews. When you mm -hmm. make two reviews, you will get back the review of your work. So we have, uh, by doing this, we, uh, every student will get at least two reviews of their work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I, I'm not sure I, I answered your question. Uh, yeah, you answered perfectly, yeah. Okay. I just wanted Very to good. see what kind of sources are used for data mining to see this. And for repetition, rep uh, repetition is like just repetition of abstract word, right? So like the words that require synonyms. So you predefine the domain of repetition in your software, right? Uh, the, um, the repetition is a repetition of, of certain words. Uh -huh. uh, we do have uh, we do have them qualified in mm -hmm. the system, but I, I am not really sure how this is done. Uh, Marcio, mm -hmm. the student who's doing this, he's here. Uh, he's let me see, he's here. If he's still here, yeah, he's here. Uh, perhaps Marcio, his English is not so good, but uh, mm -hmm. if he wants to answer in Portuguese, uh, I can try to translate. 
Márcio, como... Alicio, that would be wonderful, actually, because we've been this year trying to conduct our sessions multilingually in whatever way that we can communicate we can. with each other. So, so let's, let's so try it. Let's see, yeah. Márcio, tu, tu tá nos ouvindo? Márcio, tu podia explicar como foi feita, uh, como é feita a detecção das repetições no sistema e eu vou tentar traduzir. I'm not hearing. Well, perhaps we should move to another question, and then when he comes back, we we try to solve this problem. Is there anybody else who has have any comments or experience or thoughts about um, what we've discussed today? <coughs> yes. You? Yeah. I think we have Marianne who has her hand up. Marianne, um, you can unmute your mic and ask a question. Hi, thank you very much for that um, presentation. That was very interesting. I'm a, a PhD uh, candidate at OISE, and I am uh, my research is on second language academic writing at the graduate level. Um, and I just finished doing uh, um, my interviews with my students. And the, con the concept of peer review kept coming up repeatedly in those interviews. So I was really pleased to, to come and listen to, to your presentation today. Um, uh, my question for you is, is that I'm not sure if it was because it was in Portuguese and I don't speak Portuguese, unfortunately, <laughs> um, but I didn't really understand the review process. Um, do this, the students who use this tool, they go on, uh, are they, is the tool giving them hints on like grammar and the mechanics of writing or is it doing, is it looking at, at the content of the writing and, and how the writing flows? What, what exactly is happening in that review process? Marianne, thank you very much for your question. It's a, it's a very interesting question. In fact, yeah, um, so let me try to explain first how, uh, how the system works uh, in terms of the writing and reviewing. Uh, when you log into the system, you can log in individually or you can log in as part of a group. Usually uh, teachers, they are creating groups for their students. Uh, so the students can review essays that are done only within the group, or they can review texts that are in the system. Now this is an open platform that is available to anyone. So students can just go in and review. I have some statistics here that I was going to show you. Just let me uh, share the screen. So let me see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, this was, uh, we have now in the system 659 essays written, 439 students using it, uh, 1,445 reviews done, and 11 groups. So these groups are teachers, they create these groups and they put the, their students in these groups. So if, if you start as, if you, log in the system as an independent student, let's say, uh, you have, you can start reviewing, you just go uh, in the menu, you say, I want to review uh, an essay. The system will pick up an essay that has not received reviews enough and will give it to you. So you will see the essay, you will see the topic 
that the essay was about, you can open because you have to know what the student was supposed to write for that particular essay. And then the, the system has, uh, I don't know, seven or eight steps. It, it, it goes one by one. So the first thing it makes you look for these repetitions and it shows you the repetitions. Uh, it doesn't show you grammar, uh, grammar problems or uh, it, it, uh, at some point it asks you to look for grammar problems. It talks a little bit about grammar problems, but it's not going to guide you uh, to show you these problems in the text. Uh, so most of the time it's uh, showing you uh, some things and uh, in the text mining thing, <laughs> the text mining feature of the system, it will show you that those two graphs, one that was extracted from the topic and the other that was extracted from the essay. And it will say, now you can compare this because what the text mining feature does is it, it tries to extract the concepts, the main concepts from those two texts. And it will show you those and say, you can have a look at these concepts, have a look uh, at, the, at the essay, at the topic, and think about, think about it and, uh, and, and say whether you think that the student wrote strictly about the topic or if he or she uh, talked about something else. So it's kind of a step by step through all those competences. Uh, in our case, we were guided by that uh, national examination. So we took all those competences. We, in fact, we worked with a large group of students and teachers because uh, we, were, we were aware of the fact that as students were reviewing the, uh, each of these criteria, we had to use a language, a language that was kind of accessible to them. And they had to feel comfortable about the criteria they were evaluating. So we show them all the criteria. There was a very long list of criteria and they selected saying, I think this is more relevant. I think this is more relevant. And we ended up by making a, uh, an, an extract of these criteria, the ones that we actually implemented uh, in the system. So Marianne, I, I, I hope that uh, it became a bit more clear. Can I uh, add something a little? Sure, Sorry. please, Sophia. Uh, and it's important to say that teacher can customize the process. Oh. So teacher can say, okay, we are going to review that, that and that uh, aspect, and this uh, is the way to do it. And all of that is customizing. Perfect. That's, uh, that's very important, Sophia. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's true that the system has a list of criteria, but the teacher can select the criteria and can customize it. The teacher can include other criteria if, uh, if necessary. Thank you. That was very informative. Thank you. Well, we, I have so many questions still to talk about this, but we want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, but I do want to say that um, with the guidance of teachers and the, you know, adults in the school um, environment, this is really a step forward uh, regarding um, children and peers having, you know, a valid and authentic voice. And it also makes me consider the possibilities that children and peers may have now in even helping and assisting in, you know, um, authentic um, um, curriculum development, you know, for, you know, situations where there's free opportunity for learning, um, you know, having peers kind of guide that growth for we each know different things and different have different multi literacies. So I think it's a really, uh, a really great step forward and a really great blend of, um, you know, the human and the technological side, you know, coming together to try to really bring about 
growth and development, which is what we want, you know, to bring, you know, increased sustenance to children and to become contributing adults, happy contributing adults, hopefully. So thank you. Um, I, we always value your research, um, and it's so important worldwide. We're so pleased to meet you, Sophia. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope that we'll have you back in the near future because you're always doing such interesting things. So we, uh, Stephanie Schuler, myself, and my co-host, uh, Myron Managarin, we thank you on behalf of CERL, the Center for Educational Research on Language and Literacies at OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto, for your wonderful Tea Time Research Circle. Myron? And uh, we encourage everybody to continue to support um, all our speakers, including Alicia and Sophia and their initiative today. Um, as I just saw in the comments, um, one of our attendees has said some positive um, messages about the peer review system. So it's encouraging to see that it is making a difference in its early stages. So thank you everyone for attending. As Stephanie said, continue to encourage us, our speakers, and please um, be on the lookout for some future events. We have a jam-packed next few months. Um, some exciting initiatives are on the way. And of course, our Searle Symposium is on June 11th to the 12th, and uh, we hope to see all of you there. More information can be found on our website. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.